Hey, welcome back to Power by 8 Racing YouTube channel. This is part three, maybe four, depending on how you count it. Uh, part two was kind of continued into two videos because the front took a little bit longer than I expected. But the rear is gonna be a little bit faster. Power by your old show. Okay, so the rear is gonna be a little bit faster than the front because we don't have to worry about caster in the rear. Now, the steel frame, cars are going to be the same as what I have and the upper control arm isn't adjusted with shims like we do with the front. The aluminum body or the excuse me the aluminum frame cars like the Z06 and the ZR1 of the C6 they have a different upper control arm. I don't know if you shim them necessarily to, to take your camera out but it might be an option for you guys uh, and quick adjustments at the track. Uh, obviously it's a C5, so we have a steel frame and we're going to not be able to shim the upper control arms and we're just going to adjust our camber via the AMT plates. Now, uh, obviously the only difference is I have moved my camber gauge to the back. It's no longer on the front. It is now back here. And we are at 1.76 over here with zero toe and we are at 1.22 with zero toe. So obviously we are going to get this dialed in a lot better and we will uh, adjust, like I said, we'll go, well, now we might have to go one on each, but we will see uh, where we end up. So, all right, let me get the car in the air so we can see what uh, our settings are and adjust it from there. All right, so we get under the car and we check what we are on. And this one is set to T5. So we know that because T is covered and five is here. And then on this side, we are already staggered a little bit. And this is gonna be on S because the S is covered, T is not. So S5. So we're on T5 and S5 and that's what's given us our settings. We come back over to our chart. It's the same for both. So. As you can see, we're here and here. So we're gonna go T4, and because we know we have to increase the pass or the driver side, we're gonna go uh, from S5 to S3. So we're gonna make two jumps here, one jump on the driver side. So let's mark this down. So we've got uh, S uh, T5, S5, and we're going to take our measurements to T4, S3, and let's so swap those and take our camber reading. So because we're not switching letters, this one we can just loosen. We don't have to take the nut all the way off. This plate is in here pretty good. So let me get a screwdriver in there. And more so on the rear than the front, you will need a pry bar. So we are going to move this to T4. So you can see how that pushes that arm out. And we'll do it to the other side. All right, so the car's back on the ground. You'll see we got 2.26 on this side. And we got a little bit closer over here now at 2.06. So we cut that in half. Uh, I'm going to add one more turn to here. And we will come back and check what we get. So we're going from S3 to S2. All right, so we made that change and we are now at 2.28, 2.3, 2.26 is where we were. Let's check this other side. Oh, this side is 2.58. That gave us a little bit too much. Um, because I have some temperature readings from the car and that's what I'm kind of chasing, I know that the driver's side's temperatures stayed pretty static. I mean, it was like 140, 140, 140 across the entire width of the tire. Um, 
which is why we need a lot more camber on this side uh, added to it. Um, that side, however, did have some change in temperature based on that. So um, I know that the camber on that side doesn't have to be more aggressive than this side. If anything, this side should be more aggressive than that side for uh, Sebring. Uh, so what we might do is I don't think that I can go one more step here. If I go one more step here, we're probably gonna jump to two six or so. And I think that might be just a little bit too aggressive. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back that one back down. So we'll be at 2.6 or, or excuse me, 2.06 and then 2.2 on this side. Uh, and then we'll just take some more temperature readings when we're at the track and it's all we can do. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna get the car back in the air. I'm gonna reset that and then we will move on to the tow. Okay, I still got the car in the air. I went ahead and flipped this and I flipped it back to S2. It went to 2.6 and that's just too much. And uh, I have that data based off of temperatures. The uh, thing I wanted to show you was this is I have a Van Steel uh, bump steer kit here. I don't recommend it. Uh, look for like the after dark speed one. Uh, I think it might be a little bit better than this one. They use a lot of stainless steel hardware and they're super proud about it. The problem is, is that, or if you do get the advanced steel one is to buy a nut. Cause when you're taking this on and off, you're going to screw up these uh, stainless steel threads. So anyways, that's uh, just a tip there. So anyways, uh, I went back. So we were back to what we started with, which was T4 and S2. Let's put the car on the ground, make sure that we go back to our what 2.28 and our 2.06 all right so there we are we are back at the 2.28 2.26 that we were and we are back to 204 and it's probably just low transfer on each side so that's why there's 0.02 difference here so that's 26 now that's probably 06 now but still 04 but anyways we are back to where we were and again uh the reason that I know that I want to have more camber on my driver's side is because I have temperature readings. You really need to base your settings, get your initial settings, but then you need data to back up your settings. So get an initial setting, go to the track, run the car, take temps, see what they are and adjust your settings from there. And also on top of temperature though, you need to know what the car is doing. So. If you have oversteer, understeer, is it entry, exit, things like that, also it's gonna be an adjustment of your suspension. So those are all things you need to keep note of. And if you're not doing your own alignment, then it's at least you have the knowledge to talk to the shop that's doing it and you can ask them for advice and or uh, what to do. Anyways, with that said, let's move on to adjusting our rear toe. Uh, it's pretty simple. I've got the Van Steel uh, bump steer kits. I would just stick to the after darks. If you are going to get a bump steer kit, get them on all four. Uh, if not, you're going to have a stock inner tie rod, which is fine. Same thing. You're just going to twist it to create your toe. Um, so let me get down there and adjust the toe and we will be finishing this up. So just like the front, you can see I mark my frame so I know which way to turn to get toe out. In the case of the rear, we're looking for some toe in. So we are going to go right now from, it's about 21-ish and 21-ish, and we're gonna shoot for some toe in, which means we need this number to be bigger because of course I have a note that tells me that if there's more here, it's toe in, and we are looking for toe in. So again, I have the Van Steel bump steer kit, and you can see my sway bar is disconnected. That'll be important for any of your alignment. Uh, anyways, so my jam nuts are loose, and once that's done, you're basically just gonna spin that bar, whether it be a bump steer bar or an inner tie rod. You're just gonna spin this and you're going to do it until you get your desired toe. So we're gonna go about three millimeters and we'll move on to the other side. Oh, and as you can see here, we now have a reading of about 20 and we have 23, which gives us three millimeters of toe in. Again, our cars love to tow out under jumps, so make sure that you have enough toe in in the rear 
that you're not kicking that rear end out uh, when you are in a tight compressed turn. All right, let's adjust this one. Again, this one is also 2121. So we are going to turn this in. So basically what we're going to do is take the wheel, turn it in, not that dramatic, but just three millimeter difference. So you probably won't be able to read this number because that light's glaring on it, but you'll at least be able to see the pro stick move and we need to go in. So this is going to be a clockwise turn. So we're gonna to go to about right there. That's 23. Tighten up my jam nuts. And that's it. All right, so that's how you adjust the rear camber and rear toe on a C5, C6 Corvette. Probably the C7 as well. I don't know about the um, C8, I've never seen one, but uh, I know that those generations are all pretty close. And you could probably use this also on a Miata. I know they have a double wishbone, I think, in some of the areas, but I think that they can't adjust casters. There's something different about a Miata. Anyways, these are just big Miatas, right? So anyways, that will finish up the rear camber and toe adjustment. A lot easier and quicker than the fronts, and that's because of we only have one plate that we can adjust, and we don't shim it or anything like that to get rid of some of that camber, which, in my case, I wish we could just add a lot to that side and take a little bit away, but we can't, so I'll just have to live with it. But I'll be happy we're headed out to the track and we'll be able to test out these new settings and see what they do for us. I am going to end the video here. The series will continue on probably in the next few weeks when we can tackle bump steer and show you how to adjust for bump steer. It is a very long process. I don't have time for that right now, but that will be coming down the pike. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video or somewhere else. Power by your old show.